it's coming down. So it's very safe to say that your exogenous dose of testosterone needs to come down slowly, albeit that you can still be somewhat super physiological if you mitigate and manage the side effects which will occur. Now, keep in mind that anything over 200 milligrams exogenous testosterone per week is considered recreational dosages, whether those are fitness enthusiast dosages or strongman dosages or uh, CrossFit dosages or bodybuilder dosages, right? As the dose goes up, um, side effects become more apparent and you slowly step away more and more and more from the medical field to the point. And no doctor is really going to be able to help you regarding the changes in blood work parameters or organ health and that kind of stuff. So, right, do your due diligence researching. The more you take, the more cumbersome health management becomes. And it's the same, the exact same, the older you get. So maybe you can run 2,500 milligrams in your late 20s, early 30s. As you get older, that ideal dose that you're taking right now, your sweet spot dose will get less and less and less as you age. Because as you age, you get less resilient to dealing with the side effects, right? Of course, the older you get, that also means more time on exogenous testosterone, and you might have done some experiments along the way, and as you're getting older, um, your metabolism slows down, and the side effects of these super physiologic dosages that you're taking might do you more harm than good. So it's very likely, with time, with age, that you need to slowly but steadily bring the dose of exogenous testosterone down to what is clinically accepted. It sucks, <laughs> but that's reality. Now, I've discussed this at length in another video that I published a couple months ago. I'll link it at the end of this one, right? The decline of serum testosterone levels, but that's in uh, otherwise, quote unquote, healthy individuals without exogenous testosterone in the picture. Still, as you age, I would safely say that the dose needs to come down. We can use the clinically recognized reference ranges as a little bit of indication on how serum testosterone levels decline in otherwise healthy adults. So that being said, again, that's endogenous production, not exogenous usage. Unfortunately, total testosterone levels are only known up until the age of 19 years old. The reference range is between 240 to 950 nanograms per deciliter. But again, some clinical reference ranges goes up to 1100 nanograms per deciliter. So we know the range is between uh, zero months old to five months old or six months old to nine years old et cetera, et cetera. But anything over 19 years old, we don't exactly know the normal level of decline, which we can base our normal level of decline of our exogenous testosterone dose on. We know that the average male testosterone levels, depending on which scientific evidence you read, I'll put the first one on the screen, you see that these levels slowly decline, right? From age 20 to 24 is higher than 25 to 29, et cetera. This study goes up only to the age of 45. Then another study shows the ages from 50 to 80 years old. Um, and there you also see that the average testosterone levels are declining, albeit that the upper uh, tolerable detectable range of this study is significantly higher compared to the previous study. So at which study uh, reference ranges are we going to cherry pick of the average testosterone levels of these age brackets, right? I'll leave it entirely up to you. Um, the second one, <laughs> does look a lot more favorable. But we do have the reference range for free testosterone from age one up until 100 years old. You see that free testosterone levels actually increase up until the age of 20 years old, give or take. Then from 20 years old, it slowly but steadily starts to decline, ending up at a free testosterone up from 2.3 to 7.9 nanograms per deciliter at let's say 100 years old. And it's the same for the reference range for bioavailable testosterone, albeit that that one is not so much in depth as free testosterone, right? We have an age range of about 10 years old. Still, from the age of 20 to 29, after that, levels slowly but surely decline. So again, based on these reference ranges, based on your biological makeup, the normal decline of serum testosterone levels, whether those are total free or bioavailable in um, adult men, it's coming down, so it's very safe to say that your exogenous dose of testosterone needs to come down slowly, albeit that you can still be somewhat super physiological if you mitigate and manage the side effects which will occur as you age, right? But if they become uncontrollable, just lower the dose and leave it there. Now, let's interject myself a little bit into this picture to clarify everything that I just mentioned leading up to this point. What would I do, right, depending on my age? Because if the dose is age-dependent, and the dose needs to come down as you age, 
what would uh, Coach Vigor Steve do in a scenario like this, trying to figure out the ideal testosterone dose ranges? I started at the age of 26. So if I had a time machine, knowing everything that I know now, I would still start exogenous testosterone at the age of 25, 26 at one ampule per week, 250 milligrams testosterone annotate per week. I got more than enough results. I felt great. Side effects were tolerable and manageable. Blood work changes were also manageable. No real negative effects at that time. Then I went as high as 2,500 milligrams testosterone per week as I became older and more experienced. And of course, I do my blood work frequently to keep track of my health parameters and make the appropriate adjustments as the dose escalates. I will say I'm of the firm opinion that if you want to bring the dosages of exogenous testosterone up that high, let's say 2,000, 2,500 milligrams per week, do that when you're still somewhat young, albeit an adult. So let's say from the age of 25 to 35 years old, after which I started to notice that I became a little bit intolerant to higher dosages. So the highest dose I ran was 2,500 milligrams when I was about 35 years old. Now that I'm 40 years old, I don't think I would want to push the dose upwards of 1,500 milligrams, right? So that's 1,000 milligrams per week less. And as I age, the dose will be lower and lower and lower simply because I know that I won't be able to tolerate it from a, a physical perspective, right? Mentally, I'll surely feel fine. Physically, side effect wise, 1,500 milligrams per week is really the maximum I would be able to take. And even at 1,500 milligrams, I think I need to put a significant amount of health management in place to stay healthy. I think at 1,000 milligrams exogenous testosterone per week at the age of 40 years old, I would be considered healthy with blood work parameters and overall health metrics perfectly manageable. So anywhere between 200 milligrams to 2,500 milligrams weekly between the age of 25 to 34. But after that, dosages will come down. So right now at the age of 40 to 49, I would consider 150 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams at maximum. But when I'm 70 years old, I expect those dosage ranges to be anywhere between 50 milligrams upwards of 200 milligrams per week, which is basically identical to the clinically recognized dosages for androgen deficiency, which surely I will be by the age of 70 without exogenous testosterone replacement therapy in the picture. So what's the real ideal best dose of exogenous testosterone? That's just something you're going to have to figure out for yourself. Right? Figure out what your blood work does. Figure out if you can mitigate the side effects with health supplements or ancillaries. Right? Figure out what else you can do to make this ideal dose of testosterone work for you. And even then, right? individual response and individual risk tolerance highly determines how high you're willing to get. Because I was willing to go up to 2,500 milligrams exogenous testosterone per week, and my blood work parameters were manageable, but maybe that's not a risk tolerance, a risk profile <laughs> that you're willing to subject yourself to, right? I'm just a dumb bodybuilder sharing his experiences. And if you don't fall within that same category or you're not competing at the IFBB pro level or getting your pro cards, then uh, that high of a dose is probably not required. And you could be perfectly fine and healthy with a dose of, let's say, 250 to 500 milligrams exogenous testosterone per week for certain periods of time, and then you drop it down to a cruise dose, which is clinically recognized where your serum testosterone levels are, let's say, 1,000, 1,100 nanograms per deciliter. And in the process of figuring all of that out, if you live in the United States and you want the most accurate testosterone readings on your blood work results through liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry, LCMSMS, look no further than Merrick Health. They have excellent healthcare providers who can help you interpret your blood work results. Again, with the most, most accurate testing that you can find anywhere. So the results that you get on paper are the most accurate and thus you can make the most informed decisions on how to proceed. And whether that's uh, to raise your endogenous testosterone levels up or maybe look into exogenous testosterone use, again, under medical care through the supervision of a doctor, right? Merrick Health can help you get everything sorted. If you want to know the best dose of exogenous testosterone for you, subscribe and all will be revealed. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section, all of the citations and links to affiliates right there. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A frontable bicep for you guys. No exogenous testosterone in the picture right here, but maybe at one point in time, I do decide to go back on hormone replacement therapy and then some, and then let's see what my ideal dose of exogenous testosterone is going to be. 150, 250, 500, 1000.